Hey everyone, this is Mark here at Granular. I wanted to show you um, how to set up contact groupings within Universal Analytics uh, of GA or, or Google Analytics. Um, you know, content groupings aren't anything new, and and I'm sure many um, you know marketers or, or or analysts have used content groupings for a you know, variety of reasons. Um, you know, one of the biggest things it can really do is allow you and, and your team to have a, a really concrete way of understanding, you know, what content um, is driving traffic, what content you focus on. You know, you can even tie your content to sales. So you can say, you know, what content is driving actual sales. I know that can be huge for, for lead gen, um, all the way to, you know, e-commerce. If you're creating, you know, blog articles that, uh, you know, speak about the, um, safety of your product over another product or, uh, you know, for whatever reason, I know they can be super, super powerful. Um, so I really like content groupings and, and I thought that um, I showcase how to set them up. Um, you know, there's a million articles out there, but I think that, um, you know, the point of mine is, is really to make, break it down and show you step by step and really be, um, you know, pretty, uh, uh, small minded and in, in, uh, how I explain everything um, and not, you know, speak over um, anyone who's who possibly could be new to this. So when you go into content groupings, you know, you go into view, you pick your content grouping and make sure you're in the appropriate um, view of Google Analytics so that, you know, you can actually see this report and you're not in a different view. Um, so I'm in my client's uh, actual reporting view. So I go to content groupings and, uh, you know, here's the, the area. So, you know, just make sure you name it something that you can trace back because when you're actually looking at the all pages report, um, you'll be able to have this be a drop down and see the content grouping um, report within your all pages reports. So you want to make sure that you're actually naming this correctly. And that's something that's like easily accessible to you and, and um, easy to find. So when you go in here, um, you're, there's really going to be three ways to group these, these this content. Um, there is, and I would argue that it's like from a difficulty level, it's top down. So you can group by tracking code. So essentially, you would add a snippet of of code to your universal, so your analytics.js or ga.js for the classic, and then the global site tag. Um, and you you basically append this below your track page view part of your Google Analytics uh, script, and this would kind of identify what pages um, you know you'd, you'd want, and you can select an index. Um, I would argue that this is um, perhaps this could be a little bit more concrete um, for like larger scale websites, um, but really, I would argue if unless you have a really um, unstructured uh, kind of URI, which meaning, you know, say that your site doesn't go, you know, .com slash accessories um, slash necklaces, or if we're thinking it in a blogging term, your blog doesn't go, you know, forward slash blog, forward slash, um, you know, safety tips, forward slash, and then there, there's the actual blog name. Like if it doesn't hold this concrete structure in the URL, then I would argue it's probably best maybe for the, for the uh, tracking code. Um, because it's going to make it really tough because you're going to have to sort down and, and pick out the individual blog URLs um, if you don't have a, a clear structure. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's the, you know, the tracking code. It has its use, um, but I'd argue that a lot of that can be done through the extraction or the rule definition. So extraction would simply put, um, you use your, your page Kind of how you know basically I've explained it here is is use regular expression to create um, you know, you extract a bunch of pages that fall under a certain URI or URL um, you know to create this so um, this is really great if uh, you have really concrete URI structures um, you know accessories you know forward slash blog forward slash products you know whatever it may be. Um, and that's why I think extraction could be really good. But I think if you're really just starting out and maybe you, uh, you know, uh, don't know a whole lot of, of uh, regular expression or, you know, you're just wanting to try this out and, and, you know, you don't know extraction and you're like rule definition makes the most sense. Then, and then it's really rule de definition. Um, 
And, you know, one thing to note is that they do have a, a helpful thing for how radio expression works with channel groupings um, and content groupings, um, you know, use them for both. So um, what I did was I used real definitions. So you can see that there's four sections of my client's site that I want to organize, non-products, products, ingredients, common sense. So you, I, I've named it pretty clearly that non-product is non-product pages. Product pages are, are, you know, make sense product pages. And then this is a blog content section and this is a blog content section. Now this client site um, doesn't have the, the clear URL structure. So there's a bit of pick and play with this, but um, I wanted to still do it rules because I knew that the page, I knew the page is URLs and it was easy for me. So you can just, I'm just gonna walk you through. So this is, like I said, a little bit more, um, not as clear. I had to use a bunch of different ones, contains, um, but you know I didn't mind spending the time on this, and uh, it was easy for me to do. Like I said, if your site has a clear URL kind of formula, and, you know extraction might be easier for you, or you can just say you know page contains um, you know something simple as um, you know uh, I'm trying to think of a of a non product page. So say you have a bunch of pages listed under pro, uh, product. Um, facts or, or something like this. And this may be best for your product pages, but like if you have this in the URL, you can really just put this and then it would categorize all the pages that fall under this or have this in the URL as, uh, as a non-product page or, or you know, whatever this may be. Um, but uh, I'm just going back to make sure I don't lose that. Um, so, yeah, this is how I did it. Um, you kind of see it makes some sense. Some of the client's pages are, are uh, um, a little bit um, all over the place, but it, it works for us and it works for them. One thing to keep in mind when you do rule definition, and I'm sure you can probably see this as, as I'm working on this, is that you have to update this whenever there's new pages or if the client's changed your URL, you're gonna have to change this, which is, so makes it a little bit more upfront issue. Whereas, um, if you had it where, you know, you just put the, you know, a category of the URL or you did it through the extraction method, it would just continue to carry it. But, but if you're doing it based on individual pages, you're going to have to continually add new pages. Um, so it could be a little bit of a mess. So just keep that in mind. So you can see that I did that for non-product pages. Here's the product pages. So pretty self-explanatory stuff, cart, checkout, buy now, buy online products. Um, and then this is where the blog is. Um, the ingredients and in blog. So uh, you can see that the blog, um, not enough or too much, you know, that's another blog. Here's a blog. Now you can see, this is what I'm talking about that structure, but the thing is, is that there's no like subcategory for ingredients within the URL. So I don't have the ability to do that. Um, so I just had to find the individual blogs and going back, you know, if more blogs get published under this, I'll have to, to, uh, just add them. So it makes it a little bit more difficult. And then last one is, is, uh, you know, define rule, uh, it contains blog, but it also contains these, um, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, these are individual blogs that fall into that common sense tips. Um, you know, if you're doing just blog content in general and you're wrapping it up, this one would completely suffice for just saying, I want all content that falls under the blog, uh, excuse me, category. So that is there. And then if you go into the, um, if you save that, oh, we're gonna cancel that. You're gonna save this. And you're gonna go into the pages And you can see that um, there is all the page views. You can see page views, everything from this channel uh, content grouping. Now, you're probably noticing that I had four content groupings and one of them isn't showcased. Um, I'd argue that I believe that that one uh, blog content um, has been either archived or taken down. And this is where I get back to this. You're gonna have to keep up with this a little bit more if you do this in this method. So think hard about if you wanna do the extraction version or um, you utilize you know, the, the URL structure of your website 
um, heavily to make sure that you don't have to keep checking and, and modifying the the, check, the content groupings uh, so that you're you know successful with this. But you can see how powerful this is on, on not needing to see performance or, or traffic based on pages. You can see it based on you know where are we driving people um, in a more kind of aggregated, easy to understand way, especially for shareholders and, and stakeholders who don't, um, you know, they don't know all the, the pages of the website and they just need to know like, what are we, fo should, what should we focus on for content marketing and what is really driving sales? You can see it here. Um, so that's really all I had to share, um, but I wanted to show you it because I thought it would be useful uh, for you to, to see this and, and understand how to, to actually set it up. Um, and uh, hopefully you can take forward and, and uh, maybe set up some content groupings of your own and, and be successful with this. Um, so yeah, that's all I had to share and uh, you know, best of luck. Um, hope it works out for you.